This video is made for adult collectors because they made the baby Dinobots work in Legacy, apparently. Make them tiny! Core Class Combiners is something I've wanted for a while and Hasbro finally delivered with Volcanicus, who is clearly Dino King because Redecos helped them make their money back on molds easier and we get the Redeco first. Volcanicus is a team of six Dinobots, they added a new one. And these figures for 11 to 12 US dollars are pretty nifty by themselves, but there are some hindrances to each individual bot to facilitate the combined mode, which ends up looking a bit awkward. And if you're gonna get some Dinobots, there are some you wanna skip and all this sort of stuff, unless you wanna complete the set. But it's a very weird set of toys. Here we have Grimlock, Snarl, Swoop, Sludge, Slug, and the new guy, Scar. And as individual bots go ordering them from release, you can see the evolution and improvements made. So Sludge suffers hard from being the supporting portion of the torso. Like in combined mode, he becomes the upper legs and the arm attachments, so he suffers extremely hard from that. He looks goofy with his chunky dino split thigh thingies, which are done in a very interesting way to facilitate the transformation. Slug isn't that much better. While he may look the part, the proportions are strange in where his bulk is located. He also suffers a bit from his combined mode as he's the head and all the stuff that locks the combiner torso into place. But he's also a bit of a step up from Sludge. And for being the first two they released, it was a bit rough out of the gate as we couldn't really visualize the combiner yet. But that changed when they released Grimlock and we were finally able to see how the legs were gonna be done. And it's an okay looking leg, but we'll get to that later. Grimlock himself though is a very neat toy, though there is one choice that kind of baffles me a bit. He has bicep swivels, but no elbows. And you may think, oh, well, that's for the combined mode, but no, they just, like, the bicep swivel thing is for the dinosaur mode, yeah. But there's enough of a gap there to allow for, like, a space for maybe elbows. I get, like, the, you know, core class budget, blah, blah, blah. The ball joint there, so you can do both the swivel and a bend, would have been a better option, I think. But even still, without them there, I very much like his chunky and brick-like look. Then we got Swoop and Scar. Swoop's kind of basic, like he transforms in a very basic arms to the side, legs at the top, blah, blah, blah. But he was so hard to find here. My buddy We Bought the Robot had to sell me his because I couldn't find it at all. But as a robot, Swoop looks, Swoop? I don't know why I said it like that. Swoop. Swoop looks proportional. I kind of wish he had the red torso instead of the blue one because it would fit with the rest of the Dinobots because in the combined mode, the blue just kind of sticks out to me because he's the only blue component. This was also the introduction of elbows into the core Dinobots. And then they immediately went away with Scar. Scar is the new kid on the block and he looks great. Chunky and full of character even if he is just a tactical medic. He fits with the rest of the Dinobots like they got his look to match the rest so well that you can't tell this is a new addition to the team just for this combiner. His gun though is legit just a fist. Not elegantly splitting to become guns with like round magazines like Swoop. This is straight up just a fist with a laser on it. At this point, Grimlock was my favorite of the bunch. That wasn't until a little bit later. Honestly, what seemed like a fair bit later actually. We got Snarl. And oh my god, Snarl is good. Snarl has elbows, knees, proper weapons. It feels the most solid of the bunch. He also looks the best visually because he's got more color on him and actual silver paint and some nice reds. So his color palette looks a lot less bland in comparison to the rest of the Dino Buddies, which are just made out of gray with little bits of paint on them. But overall, they do meld very well together. But if you wanted to buy Dinobots and exclude the combiner, there's only four I'd really say that are worth getting by themselves. Snarl, Swoop, Scar, and maybe Grimlock. Sludge and Slug are just so hampered by the whole becoming a torso. Like, they do that very well, but the robots in the dinosaur modes just don't really fit. They also don't really gel well with the rest of the robot dudes, Sludge especially with how awkward his design is. So the articulation of these guys is just kind of all over the place, and to explain this, I'm going to bring in a core class that came out before them all, which is Iguanus. And Iguanus here has a head rotation, shoulders, elbows, biceps, waist, hips, knees, thigh, ankles. Like he's got all the standard posing minus fists. Only two of these have the standard pose. Well, actually only one of them has the standard posing technically. So they're a bit weird. Out of the, out of the way. Sludge is just weird. He's got head rotation. Shoulder bolt. What? That came off. Okay, pro tip, don't hold it here and squeeze that out of the way. 
He's got shoulder ball joints. He does have a waist joint, although it's in the middle of his waist. And because of how this looks, it looks like he's got his pants all the way up to his nipples. You have a hip skirt that when you open it up, he just kind of loses his thighs. You can see how his legs are attached. They're attached here, not where the legs normally go. This is like an illusion that it looks like it's attached, but then it just isn't. And you could raise the legs that far and they go back that far and they can go out. But when they go out, that looks weird. Does have um, that and you have knees. So Sludge is just, you just sort of leave him alone and don't touch him. Slug has basically correct articulation except for he has no elbows. Uh, he does have everything else though. His waist is really difficult to rotate because you have to like undo this stuff in order to get it to move. Then you have Scar who's pretty much the same as Slug, like literally the exact same in his articulation. Though mine, Copy's knee doesn't like to stay all the way up. Like it just bounces back. So sometimes he'll just fall over. It's a bit annoying. But when you bring in Grimlock, first of all, he's just like solid. That's why I like him so much. But Grimlock has all the same stuff as the previous two, except wrist rotation, because that that's for transformation, honestly. The, 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 yeah, that's for transformation. But he does have wrist rotation, which is nice. Then we get on to my favorite, which is Snarl. He's also missing some stuff. He has elbows, he's got head, he's got waist, he's got knees and hips. He doesn't have any swivels though, so there's no thigh or bicep cuts, nor are there ball joints in the thigh or bicep, which I would have liked to have seen, um, because then it would have been able to do bicep swivels and thigh swivels, but he just doesn't have that. He's still really like poseable, but he is missing it. Also, he does have butterfly joints due to his transformation, so you can fling his arms forward. Same with Scar, and same with Grimlock. So they all have butterfly joints, I forgot to mention that. But Snarl is the only one that can actually take advantage of his butterfly joints because he comes with a sword. So there's that. And then you have the most articulated one, which is Swoop. Because he not only has the extra wing stuff, but his head is extremely expressive because it's on a ball joint due to his transformation. And he's got elbows with bicep swivels. He's got thigh swivels, like dedicated double mushroom peg thigh cuts. And a waist joint. However, the bird head, bird head. The pterosaur head does get in the way, so yeah, there is that, but you can just move it and rotate it. But he's got the most posing. So as robots, they're all right. Still fun, but flawed. Now let's make them dinosaurs. So now let's turn them all into dinosaurs. And because Swoop is still in front of the camera, I'm gonna do him first. So you peg the legs together, bring the head back, flip up that, peg the arms into place like so, fold out the wings, rotate the legs back. And that's basically Swoop. Whoa, Swoop's fist went flying. Scar here, peg his legs together, flip that around, flip down the legs, rotate this. Oops, first you wanna do the arms. That's, that's the thing you wanna do first. Eh. Peg it together, then you peg the head in. Then you fold this around, flip down the legs at the back, stand him up. Then you take his weapon, which is just a fist, and you plug it into his tail, and now he has a fist for a tail. But there you have an Ankylosaurus. Grimlock. Basically is just your standard Grimlock. You rotate the legs down like that. You bring the back section, make sure his head is straight. Bring the back section over and close that all up around his face. Peg the legs together, fold them up. They'll clip in. Then you take his weapon that becomes his little tail piece. There you have thick Grimlock. Sludge is interesting. Sludge does not do the traditional sludge transformation unlike Swoop and Grimlock. So you take him and you rotate his, that falls off again. It comes packed separately, that's why it falls off. You rotate this 180 degrees, then you bring the arms up, you peg them in to each other. Come on, there we go and you leave them up just a little bit. Then you peg the legs together, fold this section up, and it will feed into here and close and then close up. That's really satisfying to do, even though he's like the worst of the six. That's the most satisfying transformation. Slug is just basic. You just He's very basic. He just becomes a man who squats down on all fours. 
Like, that's it. Yay, we're done. Peg in, you actual moron. Tail, peg it in. That's literally it. That's all it does. Yay. And now you have Snarl, who is probably the most involved of the bunch. Because you gotta fold this section up, bring this down, peg it into place. Like, so, come on. Peg in. Peg in. There we go. Then you fold the knees 90 degrees, bring out the head, and then fold it the rest of the way. So you fold the knee, bring it out 90, fold it the rest of the way, peg it together, and then this clips into place. This follows the Studio Series 86 toy, like the, the, the big boy right here. It follows that, but more simple. And there you have Snarl. These are adorable dinosaurs. Like, they are so funny to look at. I love them. My favorite for sure is Snarl, but the rest don't look bad by any means. Even Sludge. They have their flaws in this mode, but like, they're so minor in comparison to the robot. The only real eyesore are Grimlock's fat ass ass and Sludge's- Okay, why are you making the Dinobots this thick? That's weird. Scar looks really funny with his fist tail, but it kind of makes sense with the whole club for a tail ankylosaurus thing. Now let's do the thing they're truly built for. Becoming Dino King. I mean Monstructor. I mean Volcanicus. All right, let's build Volcanicus now. Zooming out for this. So, what should we start with? Let's start with the torso. You get sludge. You just sort of yank him out and rotate. There's a lot of rotation that happens with sludge, but you basically turn all these legs around like that, open the head up, and just sort of have him in this extremely weird pose like that's, that's, now he's prepared. Let's open that up. Now he's prepared to receive, to receive slug. Unplug that, take this out. We'll look at that in a minute. And then this plugs into sludge's chest. Then you take slug here. You just kind of, you want to unfold the legs for now, just so you can get all this stuff out of the way. Then you rotate the arms, not rotate the arms. You bring them back like this. They'll peg in. Well, before they peg in, you want to put this in first and then peg it in because that way it'll hug everything. And then you take this section here, you just smack it on top, peg the arms into place, peg those into place. I like to bring these legs forward. Then you take this mysterious black piece, which is his head and plug it in. And that's the torso. And that's all we had for like a good few months until Grimlock finally released. And Grimlock's transformation is you unplug that and bring it here like this, that becomes the heel, not the foot. I thought this was gonna be the foot. No, it's the heel. You bring these forward, peg them in like that, peg it into there, open this up, fold it down, and then take this piece and rotate it up and forward like that. And now you have a brick. Also to make another brick, ah, rip this piece off. Like just take that off, fold up that, bring this back, open this up, fold in these sections, close it back up, and then peg this into place here, like that. You bring this section around like so, they'll peg together at the shoulders somehow. Eh. Then they'll peg into here as well. There you go, and then you plug this into here to form the foot, and you have another brick. Two bricks. These are luckily on five millimeter pegs, so you can just Peg them all in, like that, which for some reason Grimlock doesn't go in all the way. So he's kind of a bit wobbly, but there you have that. Now we do the arms. Unplug that, bring this out, rotate this around, fold these down, fold this down, bring the legs around, peg them into place, plug in the hand, like that. That is an arm. This side, bring this down, Fold these back, rotate this around, rotate this around, and then just sort of leave the wings there. I'm not a big fan of that, but you just kind of leave them there. And then you plug this together like so, peg this in, bring this out, plug it in there, plug this in there. Oops, come on, come on, there we go. And then give him the world's dinkiest sword and that's Volcanicus. So the combined mode looks a, it looks a bit rough, but for a combiner made out of small $12 dudes, it's not bad, but in all honesty, it looks a bit craggly. 
He has no feet, gorilla arms, and just feels a bit of a mess, but he's fun in an interesting way. Yes, I know there are third party combiners that do a much better job, but they don't cost 12 bucks each. They cost about 40 to $70 each, so that isn't really a fair comparison, so I will not be making it. And yes, I know there are upgrade kits for this too. I don't own any of them. The base figure looks strange. He's just standing on two big tower blocks. That's my really like my only visual complaint with this guy is the lower legs. The rest of it though, gorilla arms and all, looks pretty interesting. Like it feels like this is what the Dinobots would combine into. Those scars hand keeps falling off on my copy. And he's also roughly Voyager height, which is honestly kind of neat. A combiner that doesn't take up a lot of space. But there is something kind of suspicious about the legs. At the bottom of his non-feet, there are two similarly shaped peg holes for something to plug into but nothing plugs into it. I think those are for feet, like actual feet pieces. And this is technically Dino King, who apparently is going to be a PulseCon exclusive for this year as a box set. So my assumption is they're gonna do the hotshot thing and throw a bunch of extra stuff in there. Now, Volcanicus's articulation isn't the best. Um, you have rotation at the head, which is nice. Rotation at the shoulders, though they kind of stop at certain points, so. You can't get him with his arms folded up. They do go out at the shoulders. Does have trigger happy shoulders, so yeah. Uh, thigh, thigh. Bicep rotation, gorilla arms on both sides, no wrist swivels, and this one likes to just fall off. So, at the slightest touch. Waist rotation, hips can go forward, they can go back, they can go in and out. You have thigh, his arm fell off. You have thigh rotation kind of, which is at the knee, but you can also rotate the thigh if you want to. And then the knees can bend. Grimlocks though likes to open his head. So yeah, that, that does happen. But that's like it. That's all he can do. If you buy the upgrade kits, because I know they exist, you can plug in the feet to give him ankle tilts. You can give him better arms. I have seen a solution to this where someone took this section right here and then just sort of rotated it back around, flip this one up, right? And then you rotate, the, rotate this one around. Then you can sort of just like slot the fist in there and that'll give you that for an arm. And you can like use that to bend the elbow, but then that's not pegged in. This side kind of has a similar solution, but I'm not gonna do it because it doesn't really work that well. But there are some solutions to getting better articulation, including buying upgrades. But yeah, I'm not, I might get feet. That's probably as much as I'd get for him is, is upgrade feet. Cause he desperately, those are not feet. So this is a neat set. And at least where I live, they're all pretty much on shelves one way or another. So completing it isn't that hard. I could just go to a GameStop, a Walmart and a Toys R Us and be able to complete the whole combiner in a day. And they're cheap. A combiner made of a bunch of $12 dudes. But what if I were to say it this way? It's a $72 combiner. That kind of puts it at a bit of a slightly different perspective. At $72 US pre-tax for the whole thing, you're getting six fairly competent toys with a wide play pattern and loads of compatibility. And I do have fun messing with all but sludge, but it is kind of a pricey one when you add it up. So is it worth it in the end? Kinda? Like, I like it and I have no regrets in getting it, but if you're someone who's on the fence due to design or cost or whatever, not sure if just waiting for the Dino King version is a better option for you or not. But that's my look at Core Class Volcanicus. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time, Bye bye